Hello fellow gamers, my name is Jai and welcome to A Gamer's Guide to Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov is a hardcore, realistic, online first-person shooter with RPG features. Now being realistic, gameplay is very immersive and offers plenty of new and exciting experiences with each and every raid. However, to play online and have fun, you should learn how to accurately play the game, which can be stressful, I won't lie which is why I'm making this guide to make the process more fun, whilst retaining the information that you need to progress. Here is a table of contents on what will be discussed. And yes, it's goddamn long. Timestamps are going to be in the description by the way, and if at any point in the video a keybind doesn't work for you, or you find yourself constantly struggling with one, don't hesitate to pause and change it to something way more comfortable. I also highly recommend looking into the Battle Buddy Escape from Tarkov phone app as it contains a ton of helpful information on the game that I'll mention throughout and can also be a convenient way to pass time in school or while you're working or you know you're just on the john. So first off, to play Tarkov. By the way, I'm going to call it Tarkov, not Escape from Tarkov because that's a waste of both our time. Anyways, to play Tarkov, you're going to first have to buy it, which is a shame. It's important to note that there is a somewhat pay-to-win version called Edge of Darkness, which is edgy as f The pay-to-win costs an extra honey, and it gives the player a little head start for comfort in the early game. However, by no means is it OP, so don't sweat it if you're poor like me. Just kidding, I bought it. After purchasing the game, I heavily advise that you install this game under a solid state memory drive as this game is constantly loading assets as it features maps that are large alongside a ton of items as well as the players loading in and out constantly. In short, this game needs to load it fast, which works best under solid state memory. Now download it. Now that you've got the game, and you'll probably want the game in English, I mean, unless you don't speak American, then you'll probably want to do our language. Come up with a great username. Ah, oh, f that one's taken. Come up with a better username. You're also going to be selecting between the bear and the USEC, and honestly, the bear is Russian, the USEC is American, and the only difference is going to be some of the starting gear you get. It's going to be slightly different, but it really doesn't make a difference, so just pick one. Oh, right, I forgot they come with, like, different voice lines and different faces. But you can also change this later, so don't sweat it. We're going to mess with your video settings very quickly. Open your video settings and match my video settings on screen for an easy FPS boost. Or if you're just a mega chat with fat stacks and hella RGB lights and enough VRAM to go around and turn everything to high and enjoy the beauty that is Tarkov. But in all seriousness, if you want an in-depth explanation on all these video settings, I'm going to have several excellent videos in the description that go into detail and optimal settings so be sure to check them out, either now or later. Okay, sorry for all that garbage. Now let's actually play the game. If you click on character, you're going to see your stash, which is your out of raid inventory, like a bank on MMORPG games. And as you can see, this is going to be your starting gear. But don't worry about it for now. You're already equipped with the basic necessities and will allow for us to stick our toes in the water and get jiggy with it. So let's get into an offline raid by clicking Escape from Tarkov, and we'll discuss all of these screens later, but for now, click your PMC character, and then hit next. And here's the selection of maps. We're going to mess around on customs, as it is the most basic map for learning. Above the next button, you will also see two times ticking away. These are the options for exploring at either nighttime, or daytime. And since you're not going to have night vision for a while, we're going to click on whatever time is between 0600 and 1800. Then hit next, not ready. And here we will check the enable offline setting. And this is where you can do all of your offline learning while having no risk of losing your items. So if you want to practice your newfound knowledge, always remember that this is the place to do it. You will enter an offline raid with no players and the option to enable AI with adjustable settings. This allows for you to either practice on AI, explore the maps or both at the same time. So we're going to keep the current AI settings and hit ready. Okay, baby, it's taken a hot minute to get here, but now let's actually play, actually play the game. Movement is the most simple aspect of successfully playing a shooter. Positioning yourself tactically or effectively will ensure that you have the high ground against Anakin. Oh, uh, I mean the enemy. 
For starters, as with any first-person shooter, we've got WASD, or WAS, to move, and mouse to look. Now the natural character speed is a brisk walk, alongside a sprint, as well as a slow walk. We've also got the classic crouch and prone. Tarkov takes these and goes a little further, introducing the ability to both increase and decrease your moving speed or crouching height. It's important to note that your movement speed and crouching height directly affects how loud you are perceived by other players or enemies as depicted here. Next we've got the classic jump, and as of currently, beta 0.12, this game does not feature vaulting or climbing in any capacity. It is still possible, however, to jump over most waist height walls or fences. Note that the green bar is going to be your character's stamina bar, and this affects more than just sprinting. It can affect your ability to get up from prone, and can even cause debuffs to your PMC if abused. We've also got a few more complicated movements, being the ability to lean left and right, as well as the ability to control exactly how far you're going to lean. You can also simply reset this by just hitting lean again. We also have a wide stride left or right, and this is very important for wall peeking. And then we've got some wacky stupid gun handling for either niche combat situations. Or to get a super poggers clip for your YouTube montage. Alright, now that we've got that covered, take some time to maybe check your keybinds, change them if you need, and even practice using these controls around enemies you can find. As you can see, they work quite well. F Almost all combat in Tarkov is going to be centered around firearms. Almost. And Tarkov has slightly more mechanics than your average shooter, so let's see what your bullet shooter can do. Before we make this complicated, let's keep it simple. You get the gun, you shoot the gun, and if you want to kill him faster, you shoot them in the head. Mouse left and right click are fire and ADS respectively, and by default, ADS is a toggle, which is actually garbage, so let's change that one together. Also, B is to change a weapon's fire rate if available. This game also has a very accurate hip fire, which doesn't have an aiming penalty like other games. So don't be afraid to use hip fire in some situations. ADS will center on your screen, and if your gun does not have an actual sight or iron sight, their perspective will seem wonky since your PMC doesn't actually have anything to aim with. However, for game design, the gun will still fire at the center of your screen. And finally, bullet drop. While there is bullet drop, unless you're aiming at someone very far away, always have your crosshair on their body. Don't aim above their head expecting a slight drop or you'll miss. Here's a good example on screen. And if you're super sus that there's going to be some bullet drop, then just aim for their fucking hairline. Okay, it's complicated time. Each class of firearms chamber is fitted for ammunition of a certain size with differing calibers and ballistics identified by name. And will only work if the gun is loaded with the appropriate ammunition some being weaker or stronger in terms of damage to either armor or flesh. But this comes with game knowledge and experience, so don't worry about it too much. The Battle Buddy app does contain this information, as well as the Tarkov Wiki, which has a ballistics chart, and it's very, very handy. This little cheat sheet will come in very handy again, so you may want to bookmark it for later, as well as for your entire Tarkov career. On a quick note, it is possible for a gun to jam or misfire, which must be rectified before firing again. Magazines are loaded and fired accordingly, meaning the amount of bullets in the magazine will be continuous and not automatically carry over like a Call of Duty game. So it's important to keep track of your current magazine and any that you're carrying. You can check your current magazine by pressing Alt-T. 
or by clicking the middle mouse button in your inventory. Magazines you begin a raid with are known, however magazines picked up will carry an unknown amount of ammunition as indicated by the question mark. When reloading, your PMC will automatically reload using the highest packed magazine. However, if you resort to reloading with an unknown magazine, it will pick the heaviest weighted magazine. And it's very easy to lose track of how many bullets that magazine may have, so it is important to frequently check. Loading bullets in raid is realistic in that each bullet must be inserted manually, which can be a very slow process if you're in a firefight. So be sure to prepare so you don't end up like him. Each gun has its own stats, which include recoil, the kick when fired, RPM, rounds fired per minute, ergonomics, how a gun handles, including ADS speed, where higher means faster speed, and slower drain, and vice versa, as well as effective distance, which means what it says. These stats are increased or decreased by weapon modifications, which can be complicated if new, which I assume you are. Basically, a gun can be totally tricked out if you know how a gun works, but if you're not in JROTC or whatever the f then you probably don't know all of the components and can be easily confused. So stay tuned for more information. We're done with guns for now, so we'll move on to armor and equipment. Armored equipment has three features, durability, protected areas, and level of protection each being pretty self-explanatory in general detail. Put simply, zero durability left on armor means it is in a broken state indicated by the red text and holds no more protection than a do-rag. Level of protection indicates the protection rating of that armor and how good it protects against different levels of ammunitions. See the ballistics cheat sheet or the battle buddy app. And protected areas are which limbs will have coverage. Quick note, armor is not pixel perfect realistic. For example, shooting at the neck will still count as a thorax shot. In more complicated detail, bullets blocked by armor will always damage you. However, the armor's level of protection slash durability will change the percentage that the bullet pierces and provides more damage to the effective limb, or doesn't pierce, and how much damage will be mitigated, as even a blocked bullet will still realistically injure the receiver. The max armor points out of a fresh armor provides that armor's lowest percentage that a bullet will pierce and decreases the current armor points with each bullet received. The lower the current point value of the armor, the greater the percentage of a pierce. Now if that doesn't make any f***ing sense at all, then just leave it like this. Any bullet can damage armor and it may take a lot or less of a bullet to damage the armor. And once that armor is damaged enough, you'll start to actually hurt them. The Battle Buddy app provides a very good visual for this. Get the fucking app, it's so good. Next we have backpacks, and they are only for storing items, allowing for larger space items to be stored with better backpacks allowing for more storage. Also note that backpacks have no armor rating whatsoever. The bullet will pierce and hit whatever body part instead as if it wasn't there. Rigs allow for storage, but more importantly allow for quick use of equipment such as meds, grenades, and magazines for reloading. Magazines and grenades can be automatically used if they're in your rig. However, consumables such as health or food can be used by setting a hotkey by hovering over the item and hitting the key you'd like. This will only carry over for that single raid and will change if the item is removed. There are also armored rigs which can combine the two aspects of rig and armor with all of the mechanics included. Now we're going to discuss the most important piece of equipment in the Tarkov arsenal. Headsets. Headsets change the levels of certain sounds and noises in the game. Namely, important low-level sounds become louder, allowing to hear more important noises such as player footsteps. While suppressing very loud or obnoxious noises like gunfire or rainfall. It's important to note that all headsets have a different audio profile and come down to personal preference for the player. So be sure to explore different headsets and find your favorite. 
Whenever you try on a new headset, just keep note whether you like it or not, and then over time you'll come to find the one that you like. I he heavily advise that you never enter a raid without a headset. It is more important than a helmet or armor as hearing enemy movement will allow for your ability to reposition, advance. They are also very cheap in comparison to all the other equipment. Oh yeah, also you can wear like sunglasses and masks and sh** which look cool but they don't do sh** but they look flies. F Now this is ironically one of the lesser complicated subjects of Tarkov, since it looks complicated at first glance, however it's quite simple to learn and is easily mastered with a little bit of practice. With most shooters, we have the Call of Duty Superhuman Regenerative Abilities, where you grow your blown off limbs after just a few seconds of patience. Or we have the 100 health bar mechanic, where you only die at 0 HP and can heal that number to prevent dying. In Tarkov, we have this. You'll notice your HP is actually 440, not 100. And you'll notice we have seven health bars, which is scary. But buckle up and we'll get through this. When damage is received by a bullet, it is applied to a certain limb. These limbs include each arm, each leg, stomach, thorax, and head. Once a limb's health reaches zero, it becomes a destroyed state, or nicknamed blacked, by the color of the limb. Once a limb is blacked, damage received to that limb is then distributed to the rest of the able limbs, unless it's the head or thorax in which death occurs. There are two situations that result in death. Once all of the available health becomes zero by debuffs at lower health, or once the head slash thorax limbs receive damage that result in zero, then the player is automatically killed. For example, if the head has 1 HP and a blacked arm receives 50 damage, the received damage would distribute evenly among all the limbs pushing the head past 0 HP, resulting in death. There are also many debuffs that will reduce the player's health or impair their senses. You can learn all about these on the Tarkov Wiki, but the most important ones will be fractures, a light bleed, and a heavy bleed. Once a limb is fractured, which only applies to arms and legs, there is a physical impairment. A fracture itself won't kill you, but it will drive you f crazy until it gets you killed or makes you quit yourself. Light and heavy bleeds will deal damage to all limbs over time and will kill you over time once your health reaches zero. Light bleeds deal one damage every six seconds and heavy bleeds will deal one damage every four seconds. Both of these apply to all limbs as well. This can be very deadly if not treated in a timely fashion. It is good to note that bleeds will not kill your blacked head or thorax, but they will still make you vulnerable if it happens. However, it will kill you if it makes all your limbs reach zero health. Now that we have the damage mechanics down, we can discuss the healing mechanics. There are several healing items that deal with different situations. We have basic healing items that will increase health in a damaged limb, like Salua's, Ifac, this thing that looks like a slice of cheddar, and a few more. These can only be used if the limb is not black. If a limb is black, once again meaning 0 HP in the limb, then surgery must be performed with either a CMS kit or a Survival 12 kit, which will bring the limb back to 1 HP and operative. This process is longer than other healing, so make sure you're in a safe place before attempting to perform. Surgery will also result in your limb's permanent raid health becoming lowered. So don't think that you're invincible because you have enough healing items. Also make sure you're not bleeding because it will bring that 1 HP right back to zero and return to the destroyed state and it'll tilt the f*** out of you. After that we have the debuff assisters. We got splints for fractures, bandages for light bleeds, and a hemostat, s-mark, tourniquet for heavy bleeds. Note that healing items can also be used to heal some debuffs for a greater cost to the item's durability. For a list of all the available heating items, guess where to look? Yes sir, the Battle Buddy app. It's so good, get it. To practice healing, return to an offline raid with all your available heals, and just practice taking damage from scavs and using different healing items to better understand this mechanic. Now on to homeostasis, which is what I personally dubbed this game mechanic, which in this case refers to the human body element of the PMC. This only refers to the PMC's hunger and hydration. However, in future builds, this may include things such as PMC's temperature, exposure to radiation, 
blood pressure, and whatever the f*** this is. All you need to know, beta 0.12, is to make sure you're consuming food and water. Once hunger or hydration becomes zero, the PMC will retain debuffs that affect vision and lower your health over time, similar to that of a bleed, and is just as deadly, slowly bringing the PMC health to zero and death. This will kill a head or thorax that is destroyed. There is a plethora of items in the city of Tarkov, or country, whatever the f*** this is. Since the name of the game is to enter a raid, loot, and get the f*** out, deciding what to loot is important and in many cases is very time sensitive to avoid getting murdered. Each item in the game occupies squares in your grid inventory and therefore must be managed when looting by rotating or moving items to fit in your storage for maximum grid usage. Each item also has a weight associated with it, and with more and more total weight, as indicated, will result in a greater load on the PMC, which will cause the overweight debuff, slowing movement and causing more stamina to be used, alongside some more debuffs. There are three categories of items that I will discuss. Combat items, ammunitions, grenades, armor, guns, weapon mods, heals, or food. These are items that you will be actively using in a raid. Barter slash hideout items. These are items that are not used for combat in raid, but do have uses outside of a raid for quests or the hideout. And I'll explain the hideout later. Keys. Keys are items that allow for access to different parts of various maps that will allow for rarer or more expensive loot or used to reach areas that are required to complete quests. Now you may ask, where do I find items? Well, literally everywhere. However, these items don't get an outline to help you see them, so you must know where to look and look hard or you may miss many items. Tarkov maps have set spawns for different categories of items. You can see this item category by examining the item. An electronic indicates an electronic spawn, which can spawn a different item from that category when loading into a raid. Now this takes a great amount of map knowledge to understand every spawn, but the easier way is to search jackets and crates and stuff. These containers are static on every map and will almost always generate loot for you, whether good or bad. Now a helpful site for this is mapgenie.io. It has each Tarkov map, and be sure to make a mental note of that container to get some loot from raid to raid. Now since I'm the gamer in charge here, I recommend always taking healing items and food you stumble upon, as they can be expensive and are always going to be useful from raid to raid. You should grab all the ammo you see and stock up until you learn what ammo is good and garbage, and throw it away accordingly from your stash. Also keep uh, sight attachments, grips, and silencers. You'll find that these are very precious. Finally, we must discuss the found in raid status, and this is one of the most important aspects of items. The found in raid status is applied to items that are found in raid and extracted with from the same raid. The found in raid status is generally required for quest items, so that items required are achieved through gameplay and not by having your OP friend just load you the f*** up. Found in Raid is also required in order to be traded to other players on the Flea Market. The Flea Market is a player trading that's unlocked at higher level. Look up a video about it when you're an intermediate player, not a newbie. The Found in Raid status will also be removed if a Found in Raid item is brought back into a raid. This is to prevent items from being given to other players to turn into quests or to trade on the Flea Market again for big money. Learning all of the good items from the bad items will take a long time. So just loot whatever and let your experience decide what is good and what is bad. Now that you're actually playing the game, you will need to be able to escape in order to keep your loot by finding certain spots on the map labeled extractions which allow you to leave. Understanding each map takes game sense and experience to completely learn. So get ready to get obliterated time after time when you're trying to learn. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? Remember that there are multiple sources that will help you navigate every map since there is no good live in-game map. And if you're ever stuck, just go hide in a corner somewhere. Take time to look at a map and get your bearings. Each map has unique extractions. Some are always available and some only randomly available. You can bring up your current map's extractions 
by double clicking O. No question marks indicates an extraction that is always available. Question marks will indicate a possible extraction that is only open under RNG, and it can be recognized by a marker such as a green flare or a lit beacon. Green text will indicate that an extraction is available and that another player has either already used it or is currently using it, so proceed with caution. Red means that the extraction was used and is no longer possible. In general, you will spawn randomly on a side of the map and the always available extractions will be on the opposite side of where you spawn. But always try to understand the other extractions through the wiki as they may be more fruitful for different gameplay. When entering a raid, there are two options. You can either enter as your PMC or as a scav or scavenger. The PMC is the player's main character, and this is the player that retains most of the RPG features, including the ability to complete quests for the NPCs, passive level stats, perks from your hideout, and customization. Basically permanent progression. The scavs are just inhabitants of Russia that are trying to get in on the chaos and come out with some good loot. Scav gameplay allows for a randomly selected loadout to load in and get some remaining loot. I say remaining loot because PMCs always enter a raid at the very beginning where all the loot is loaded in, and player scavs will load in into a random time in the game, which can be very early or it can be very late, but it will never be at the very beginning. So most of the time, other PMCs will have already gotten into the good loot locations, but you never know what they'll leave behind. The pro of playing a PMC is that you'll have all the opportunity for good, fresh loot and possible PMC kills, as well as skill slash quest progression. However, the con is that you go in with what you're willing to lose. If you die, you will lose anything you came into the raid with. What? I shot him in the head! The con of playing as a scav is that you're loading in late with less PMCs and less loot around. Remaining PMCs can also be very strong as they have the choice of loading in with hella chad gear, less opportunity for quest progression. However, the pro is that you're going in just to vibe. You go in with free gear that you didn't have to pay for, and you can still come out with some good loot if you know where to look. There is also one aspect to the PMC that is very nice, and that is the secure container. Say you accidentally loaded in with all your money because you're drunk and tired and just got off work. Well, you can still save it without extracting, and that's by placing it inside of your secure container, which will retain its contents even if the PMC has died. This allows for entry into a raid with necessities such as keys or healing items for multiple raids that you'll always want to carry. This is also what is upgraded when you buy the pay to win version of Tarkov. We will now discuss the RPG aspect of your Tarkov PMC. Your PMC will level up overall, as well as individual skills that will increase the efficiency at which the PMC performs certain actions, like faster healing speeds, faster reload speeds, greater player stamina pool. These levels are permanent until the next wipe. Oh yeah, every once in a while there's a wipe where everyone's PMC progression is reset back to zero. There's also several NPCs that you can trade with, either directly with money or trades through barter items. You can level these traders up, which will allow for access to more and better items, whether weapons, attachments from Prapper, or access to better healing items from Therapist, to better equipment from Ragman. You can level these traders up through three criteria as shown here. PMC level, trader reputation, and money traded between you and the trader. PMC level is self-explanatory. The money traded is back and forth, so items sold to the trader also count towards this amount. And finally, trader reputation. Trader reputation is leveled up through completing quests with that trader. However, some quests can also lower other trader reputation, so beware of this. It's important to note that there are many, many quests to complete, and if almost all of the quests are completed, the PMC will be awarded with a very, very, very awesome reward 
for all of your grinding. However, if you just want to play for fun, then that final reward isn't required at all. Although you should still complete the quests to get the reputation for the better trading levels. Quests can include tasks such as killing scavs on different maps, through different means, killing other PMCs, collecting certain items, placing certain items, and a few more. All quests have a guide on the Tarkov wiki, so be sure to reference it often or watch other YouTube videos for extra help. Finally, we have the hideout. This is the player's home, so to speak. It is out of raid, but still interactable in FPS. Through progression in the RPG, these hotspots can be built and upgraded through use of barter items and certain skills or trader levels. Some of these hotspots will passively regenerate PMC stats such as health after dying in a raid, or regenerating their homeostasis stats. This will save you some money in the long run. There are also hotspots that allow for the creation of items through recipes and time for passive help. It's also important to mention that items created through the hideout are found in raid, which can be very helpful for some quests. Now I personally recommend watching streamers or skilled players videos on YouTube or clips on Twitch regarding Tarkov as it may provide a ton of insight and allow you to obtain new information that you never thought of and it will help your Tarkov career and you will grow faster and faster with every day. Get There's also up. this very funny, oh, awesome, just, super gamer oh, YouTuber so I watch. His name is Jai. I highly recommend now, that you watch all of his videos because he's very good at anything he does forever. Oh, okay, okay so. that about sums it all up. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you get through the game with ease. And if you like this video or me, or just my voice, be sure to subscribe, comment, like, and uh, whatever else YouTubers tell you to do. Good warning.